To celebrate having the most amazing 5,000 subscribers I could ask for, I'm going to be answering all the questions that you asked me on my community post as well as on my Twitter. Let's get started now. The first question that I get asked the most often is, hey Kyle, I want to learn X, or X is some programming language, framework, or technology, and they ask, what project should I create in order to learn that technology, language, or framework? And the best answer that I can give you is to create whatever project you're most interested in or passionate about. There may be certain projects that are slightly more beneficial to use for learning certain technologies, frameworks, or languages, but it doesn't really matter what you create as long as you create something using that language, framework, or technology you want to learn. When I was learning web development, I would pick only projects that I was interested in creating, and that gave me the passion and drive to go above and beyond when I was creating those projects to really learn the intricate details of whatever I was wanting to learn, because if I wasn't passionate about the project, I would have given up as soon as I hit a really difficult roadblock or obstacle in my path. The next most popular question that I get asked is what was my inspiration for starting my channel, Web Dev Simplified? And it's a fairly difficult question to ask because there was a lot of inspiration going into the creation of the channel, but it all boils down to a few specific topics, which is that A, I enjoy web development, B, I enjoy teaching people about anything, and since I am passionate about web development and enjoy teaching, I figured why not teach web development, and third, I've always liked working for myself more than I've liked working for someone else at a company, so starting a YouTube channel is a way that I can potentially work for myself without having to work for someone else. But mostly, it is just my desire to A, teach, and my passion for web development that really made me want to bring together this web dev simplified channel. Also, it was slightly built around frustrations of when I was watching YouTube channels and learning web development, there are certain things I noticed all the time in different tutorials that I personally didn't like, so I wanted to create my own channel where I could create content and tutorials that didn't have the things I didn't like and only focused on the things that I liked for my learning experience. Another question that I see all the time in the comments of my videos is if I have any courses on Udemy or some other teaching platform such as Udemy. And the answer currently is no, but I do plan to release a course to some teaching platform, whether that's Udemy or somewhere else, by the end of 2019. Hopefully by September is my goal. I'm also currently working on a completely free full stack web development course that'll be coming out on this channel in a couple weeks. And that is really kind of a pilot for me to see what works and what doesn't work when it comes to teaching web development on a large scale course, since I've never done anything quite this large before. So I wanna tackle it in a free manner so I can get tons of feedback from you all. And then I can take that feedback and craft an either better course that I can put up somewhere such as Udemy for you. Also, if you have any suggestions, for what a course would be that you would like to see, let me know down in the comments below because I'd love to hear your feedback on what you want to see in a future course. The next question we have is whether or not I am self-taught, and if I am self-taught, what is the most difficult aspect of being a self-taught developer? And this answer is a bit of a yes and no for me. I did go to school for four years with a computer engineering degree and learned a lot of the basics of programming through that degree of computer engineering. But while taking that degree, I taught myself web development on the side because that's really what I found I was super passionate about when I first dabbled in it, and they didn't really teach web development at my school at all. So I learned almost everything that I know about web development through YouTube videos, blog posts, and projects that I created that I was interested in. The actual fundamentals of programming, luckily I was able to learn in a more structured environment at a college, but the actual web development ecosystem was something I had to take in on my own and figure out through myself. So I would say that the most difficult part about being self-taught is not having that actual other force outside of you forcing you to do the learning. I know that when I was in school, it was very easy to learn the programming because I was forced to. I had homework, I had tests, I had to do it, and there was no way of getting around it. I had tons of money I paid to do it, so I just had to do it. But when I was teaching myself web development, there was nothing telling me I had to do it other than myself. So if I had a bad day, a lazy day, and I didn't want to do web development, I wasn't forced to do it as if it was school, so it's really difficult. You have to have a lot of determination and willpower to force yourself to work even on the days that you may not want to work on learning. The next question is a bit of a fun one, and that is, what is my favorite tech stack to work in? Right now, I'm really enjoying working in Ruby on Rails because it's incredibly easy for me to get up and started with a project that's fairly complex and have it just working right out of the gate. I know with Node.js and Express, for example, there's a lot of boilerplate code that you need to create every time you create an application, but Ruby on Rails kind of hides that all away, so you can just get straight into coding your actual application without having to worry about all of the boilerplate. Now that does come with some downsides, obviously, of having 
a lot of extra hard work if you want to go against that boilerplate, but it makes getting started really, really easy, which is very fun because I don't like doing all that extra boilerplate to get started on a project. Also, I really enjoy a front-end heavy approach, so doing something like React inside of a project I really find quite enjoyable right now, mostly because I'm fairly new to it, so it's really enjoyable for me to learn all these new things about React, and there's so much to learn about React, I'm really enjoying it. I'm sure if you asked me a couple years from now what my favorite tech stack was, it would be completely different than this answer, but currently, right now, I would say Ruby on Rails, the React front end. And finally, we're on to our last question, which is what topics I plan to cover in the future on this channel. Obviously, I'm going to be covering web development focused topics such as HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, and those are really going to be my main core focuses on this channel, but I really want to explore all the different aspects of web development from back end to front end, all the way down the full stack chain, even some DevOps with how to deploy things and manage applications on a large scale. I want to focus mostly on the beginner stuff first, which is why I've been focusing a lot on JavaScript, CSS, and HTML, because those are the core fundamentals everyone must know. But as soon as I finish my next course coming out in a couple weeks, that'll really open me up to explore a lot of new avenues and new technologies that I haven't tried exploring on this channel yet. So if there's anything that would interest you guys, please let me know down in the comments below any technologies, frameworks, or languages you would like me to cover, and I'll definitely make sure to put them on my list of topics I want to cover. And that's all the questions I have. If you have a question still that I haven't answered, please leave it down in the comments because I'd love to take a look at it and answer it. Also, I want to say a huge thank you to all of you again for helping me reach 5,000 subscribers, and by the time this is coming out, we're already halfway to 6,000 subscribers, which is absolutely mind-blowing to me. It's been an incredible journey, and I'm loving every second of it, and I can't wait until we hit 1 million, because that'll be soon, right? So thank you guys very much for watching, and have a good day.